on this edition of The Self-Publishing Show. I think everything has been said. I think there, there are not many new great things in the personal development to discover. The great thing to discover is do it. Publishing is changing. No more gatekeepers, no more barriers, no one standing between you and your readers. Do you want to make a living from your writing? Join indie bestseller Mark Dawson and first-time author James Blatch as they shine a light on the secrets of self-publishing success. This is The Self-Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello and welcome to The Self-Publishing Show with James Blatch and... God. I can't match that. God. Mark Dawson. <laughs> yes, God, Mark Dawson. Have you been, James, have you been um, I doing things you should have? No, I think you're, you're too hyper. I think you may have been ingesting uh, illicit substances. The sun is shining. It's, it's not even two o'clock in the afternoon. The sun is shining. It's been, uh, it's been a good time recently. My ads are working for our books, so I'm happy. My little pet project. We're going to talk about ads today. And uh, yes, I'm in a good mood. And I'm, allow- I'm allowed to be in a good mood. Um, I suppose once now, now and again, I'll I'll load some work on you soon, and we'll change that. And uh, my wife tells me that TK Maxx has opened in Huntingdon, which actually fills me with dread. But uh, is this good? It's a, a queue around the car park. She oh, noticed. Dear. Um, and my hair is looking. I mean, I have to say, looking a little bit like Hitler now. My hair. I don't know what <laughs> else to do with it, but it's uh, it needs cutting desperately. Yes. If you're watching on YouTube, um, squint. Okay, look, before we've got a few things to talk about before today's interview, which is to, uh, do you know what? Somebody else full of energy and smiles and happy, you will walk away from today's interview with a spring in your step, I guarantee it. But uh, before we get there, let me just say uh, a welcome to a couple of new Patreon supporters. Uh, they are Christopher Wills and Emma Powell. Thank you very much indeed, Christopher and Emma. There's your shout out. Thank you so much indeed for going to patreon.com forward slash self publishing show and supporting our little endeavor, our weekly injection of all things nice and uh, neat from the world of self-publishing. Uh, something else to talk about is uh, you called me this morning, we had our morning chat this morning, and you asked about loyalty cards, credit card loyalty cards, which is something I've always been quite interested in and always do. Particularly, there's a British Airways American Express card. It's the equivalent of the American Airlines American Express card in the US. And if you spend a certain amount, obviously, when you spend, you get uh, air miles, avios, as they're called in that program. And you also get a companion voucher to half the number of air miles you actually need to take flights. Now, me, I've been doing this for a few years. and My family flew to the States two years ago, all business class return, just paying the taxes. And honestly, I mean, it's a mistake, obviously, to introduce my teenage children to business class flying because they think that's what long haul flying is about now. Uh, But fantastic thing to do for your family. Uh, and all off the back of basically earning this, what sort of is free money you pay. I think the fee is £200 a year, £195. And this year, in fact, just in the last week or so, my friend Jonathan, who's also massively into these cards and also keeps up to date with it, called me and said, right, we need to switch to the American Express Platinum card, which is a very good deal on at the moment, 35,000 membership uh, points if you sign up. Uh, through a referral anyway Uh, and then uh, that's the bonus I think there's a minimum spend over the first six months to get that and you can convert those to Avios so once you've got your companion voucher on the one card you switch your spending to the other card now I'm not the only person who does this the world is full of blogs and Twitter accounts and social media of people who track all of these and look into it but something which occurred to you today and I'm not doing it either is our spend through our advertising program we're missing a trick here, are we not? Just checking how long. Yeah, that was about two minutes of <laughs> blather. Um, yes, I was going to... I actually have um, started it the other way around and perhaps said that people who are spending a lot of money on ads are missing out on a big opportunity. And I, I am one of those people. Um, <clears throat> I probably spent, I don't know, maybe certainly five figures a month on, on ads. And um, I've just been running those through a debit card. And that's just crazy, really. Now, you're much better at this than I am, which is why I called you to chat about it. And then I posted it into the uh, SPF Mastery group, the group that goes with the uh, Ads for Authors course. And lots of people um, chiming in with what they do with lots of loyalty schemes and um, people buying their groceries with their with their money back, cash back, air miles, people who haven't haven't paid for a plane fare in years. Um, and of course, I'm now sitting, <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking, what an idiot, because um, I yes. could have had thousands and thousands and thousands of air miles um, and, and haven't. So I will be... Um, 
So we, yeah, this, I guess this is a kind of a, a, a free tip for those of us who are um, advertising or you know spending anything on on our books and our book career. You might as well run it through a credit card and take advantage of the uh, the points that you can get from uh, almost all the credit card companies will offer some kind of incentive scheme um, and. There is a post now in the uh, mastery group with lots of people talking about the various um, schemes that, that they're part of. It's well worth having a look at. Um, and so that's going to be one of the things I do uh, this week. I've spoken to my accountant just to make sure that it's okay to have. Basically, I'll be having I'll be paying for um, company spend, company ads with a personal credit card, and then paying myself back from the company. And that is apparently that's fine. The benefits aren't taxable. Um, which is good to know. So I'll be um, I'll be looking into that. Kind of uh, slightly annoyed that I hadn't done that sooner, but anyway, there you go. Um, better late than never, I suppose. Yeah, you'll rack up uh, lots of points to spend on the family, um, and there might even be ways. I'll I'll go through this thread. Then people probably ahead of the curve on us on this finding ways of feeding that back into your marketing career potentially. I don't know if there's things you can buy with those points or transfer them into something that'd be useful. But either way it's just money, isn't it? Cash back just, and pay by well, more exactly. Ads, you know. Yes, exactly. Yes. Um yeah, no, definitely. And there's lots of deals going around. I think Chase Manhattan are very good ones in the States. They seem to be from the airline uh, uh point of view, the ones I follow online. There's a couple of blogs. There's a guy called TPG, the points guy dot com. Mm. Um, there's another guy, uh, Turn Left for Less, is uh, another blog that I follow, and all of these people track the best credit card deals at any one time. They will always be referral uh, affiliates links on their site. That's how those those businesses are driven, but they're open about that at the front. Um, I also have a referral link, which I perhaps I should post. So you will have one soon once you get your platinum card. But perhaps <laughs> I should post that into the group if you want to buy through my. Uh, my Don't do uh, that. Don't do that. Anybody. The American Express uh, Platinum Card is the is the most expensive one of the lot, and I think it's worth it now because they've got a series of deals on. Obviously, it's COVID time, and there's some good deals out there at the moment. Yeah, we we should explain why it's expensive. There's a, to to have it, it's about a four hundred and fifty dollar annual um, fee. Now, the, of course, the 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 counter to that is that you make much more than that in things like access to lounges at airports, which otherwise would cost several hundred pounds. Pass. Yes, yeah, so there we go. Lounge access card, which you get after you've signed up. Yeah, so there's plenty of benefits. I mean, travel insurance, you won't need to get that separately anymore. That will all be covered by uh, as a part of the, the card. So you, you, you'll you make that back um, pretty quickly. But there is there is a fee uh, up front. So, and I think most, most will offer that kind of situation. So, yes, lots of um, things to dig into. I think you, it's one of those things you can get quite geeky about, which is probably why you're so interested yes. in it. But you Exactly. Know. The card is also metal. Well, that's I'm sold. Nice. There you go. I'm sold already. Yeah. Can he, can they do contactless? I wonder. That yes, yes, it's contactless. I have used it. Does in, it uh, does it work with Apple? Uh, I haven't put it onto my Apple Pay, but I'm sure should, it does. Should do. So yeah. There'd be no yeah. reason why it shouldn't work with Apple Pay at mm. all. So, uh, so I, I would add it to that soon. Good. Okay. Well, that's our credit card discussion. Maybe that's something we'll revisit in six months and uh, post some results. <laughs> um, we've done that. Uh, I would post say a just picture of me on a beach somewhere. Yes, so exactly. There is a tax, uh, small tax thing, which is that in the UK, we don't pay VAT on advertising spend for Amazon or Facebook for other reasons I'm not going to go into. Um, not, not like we should pay it, but we don't have to pay it, which means you can do it through expenses. You can pay it through your personal account and, uh, and then just charge your company like an expense claim you would in any company. Um, however, if you were paying VAT, I believe that would be problematic because I think there's a limit to how much VAT you can put through on an expenses claim and claim back. It has to be a direct spend from the company, uh, just something to be aware of uh, for that sort of thing. Right, that's the first thing to talk about. The second thing we are going to talk about is, uh, well, let's just quickly mention our webinar, shall we? So we had a, we had a, what can only be described as a big evening online. We had a webinar uh, with Janet Margot talking about Amazon ads and we had nearly 5,000 people register for the webinar. We have a limit of 1,000 people on the night and people were, the door shut at about 5-2 and we had people locked out, which was not great, but it was amazing response to the webinar. And then the whole webinar software sort of creaks at the edges during the evening, but it was a huge, I can only describe it as a successful evening. Mm, yeah, it's, you know, I'm not sure I'd describe this as a completely successful evening. It was very challenging. So, I mean, it was an annoying. We knew that people would get, wouldn't would be able to get in. And I had been saying that on at least two podcasts and at least two emails. 
and in the Facebook group. Um, but we still had lots of, in fact, some quite angry emails, which was never pleasant to see um, that uh, Catherine was dealing with very uh, stoically. Um, I think the issue was people, the, the go to webinar email that fires out automatically that we can't change uses words like registration. So you have, or, you know, you've, you have your place effectively. And then people would understandably were, were kind of logging in to, to take that place and then find that it's actually first come, first served. We, we can't change that. That is just how this, the software works. Um, which, but at the same time, it's not, it's not an optimal experience, especially when we had some people in Australia getting up at three or four in the morning just so they could come to the webinar. And I completely sympathize with people who couldn't get in. Um, anyway, so we, we are looking at some alternatives that will, will help us with that. But but then when we actually got into the webinar, um, I don't know why, because we, we've done it again with Joanna Penn two days later and it, w it was flawless. The, the software was rock solid. But on, um, on the first time we did it, uh, we tried to hand over control of the screen so Janet could show her slides to Janet, from Janet, sorry, from me to Janet. And it froze my laptop. Um, I have a very nice kind of top of the range MacBook Pro, um, which has doesn't it doesn't it should not have prob problems with that kind of um, application. But I was getting the uh, spinning uh, you know, beach ball of doom, and I and I couldn't touch. I, I dare not touch anything for fear that it would blow everything up. So we then had the um, we couldn't get the slides handed back to me. So poor James took over and was. James was, a, and we had slightly different decks because I'd amended mine. So James was trying to keep up with me as I was reading, uh, as I was presenting on, on the ads course. Just about did it, I think. Um, and, mm. and it, you know, kind of held together. The actual content that Janet delivered, someone uh, behind me at likes SPF, uh, the, the, the content was great. Um, and we've had really strong feedback, um, both from our webinar and then Joanna's webinar. Um, and uh, we we think we've ironed out the problems now, and we are going to do as as we said we would. We're going to do another webinar, which is we've done. We're going to be doing it on Wednesday, so this is being recorded on Monday. We'll do it on Wednesday. Fingers crossed, everything will will go to plan. And if you've um, tried to get in, I hope you can. Um, but if you can't, um, or you can't make it, or you know whatever reason, we are going to be recording this one, and we will. Uh, have it ready to be distributed by Thursday or Friday this week. So hopefully by the time this podcast goes out, that that will be available. And if you want to register for that, yes, I I mean I should say we'll have a replay ready for Friday. I could probably, with my magical editing skills, create a decent sounding webinar from that first one even. But hopefully it'll be much smoother in a couple of days' time. But either way, if you've missed both these, because this is going out on Friday this week uh, after the webinars. If you've missed them both and you want to watch this webinar and it's definitely well worth watching, uh, if you go to selfpublishingformula.com forward slash six secrets, S-I-X-S-E-C-R-E-T-S, we'll make sure that the email that comes back has the replay link in it uh, for you so you can watch that. Yes, uh, it's been a busy time on the Amazon ads front. We've got a, you know this big brand spanking new course, which we should mention ads for authors is still open at the moment. Selfpublishingformula.com forward slash ads for authors, uh, which is home to that new course. We've been doing lots of stuff around that. So we've been doing the webinars. Uh, I'm going to be doing a live Q&A just to get those initial questions uh, that people have when they do the course or just if you've got any questions about Amazon ads at all, we'll put it into the open community group. Um, probably I'm going to say... Uh, 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. I'll have to settle on that time with Emma, with uh, Janet, but we'll post into the group the details so people can start putting their questions in. Um, yes, so uh, let's also talk about uh, Prestozon. Prestozon. Hey, Prestozon. Prestozon. Hey, we have mentioned Prestozon uh, before, but perhaps you should explain what it is, Mark. Right, so Prestazon um, is uh, automation software that links with the Amazon Advertising API and enables you to do some some things with your ads accounts that is you. It's more difficult to do them manually, um, much more time consuming, and much more difficult to do. Um, so I've been aware of Prestazon for about four years now, three or four years, and I remember having a call with the founders um, about whenever three or four years ago, and I said to them that your software is good, but you know, it could, it doesn't really work for authors. And I think you're missing a trick in um, a, potentially a really, really large slice of uh, customers who would be interested in your product, but it's not really fit for purpose. Um, and, you know, they, I think they got it, but they had other things to deal with um, at that time. They're concentrating more on sellers and vendors. 
Um, but then subsequent to that, so scroll forwards to this year, and I saw um, on Facebook, uh, Presses On Now has um, an authors group. So I thought, finally, they've listened to me. Um, it's taken a while, but I, I, I got in touch with them again, and um, we've had a number of chats. Um, I've actually, I'm actually speaking to uh, Dirk from Presses On at 3 p.m. today. Um, I've got some things to ch chat about with regards to what the platform can do. Um, and just kind of to, to quickly to say what it can do, it can do things like automatically um, adjust your bids in order to try and hit your ACOS target. So you can tell you can tell it you want to hit 70% ACOS and it will then either automatically upgrade them or downgrade them, or you don't even need to do it automatically. It can make recommendations and you can then um, tell it that you want those to go through or not. It can also um, pull the data that you can get through the uh, the, the dashboard, you, things like the search terms that our readers are using to trigger your ads. Um, you can get that and download it in a series of reports, and we have that in depth in, in the actual uh, Amazon course. But what Prestazon can do is, on a tab, it will pull those automatically. So you have all of those. You can sort them all, find out which ones are converting at a high level, which ones aren't what the bids are like, what the conversions are like, all this kind of information, which you, of course you can then um, harvest the best search terms and put them into a manual campaign to start trying to drive some traffic to keywords that you know generate sales for you. So, I mean, I'm pretty I'm pretty psyched about um, Presto. I think it's got tons of potential. Um, and the good news is that we have, or I've been chatting with them for a bit, and they've put together um, a, an exclusive course for us, um, which we're calling Ads Automation for Authors. Um, I've seen the first two or three sessions. It's going to be really good. Um, and also coming in with that, um, they've they've agreed to give um, any um, SPF student um, one month's free use of the platform. So you can effectively test it out with the course um, and decide whether it's something that you are, you're interested in or not. Um, so, yeah, I, mean, I, I am enjoying it. I think it, it adds another level of sophistication and automation to a process that otherwise can take quite a long time so it's it, i think it's yeah. got a lot of potential and i think that module that course will be useful because i signed up for prestas on when you started talking about it just on the test i think they allow you to have one campaign and see how it's going although now that i'm going to be editing their course i will probably pull out the uh, spf credit card because i really need to understand the platform um and obviously benefit from using it at the same time but that's the point I was going to make is that you kind of have to put the effort into it to get anything out of it. And it's the same with all of these platforms. You can sign up for these various dashboards and reports and, and automations, but you need to understand what they can do for you and how to use them. Otherwise, and even with me, and as you say, I'm quite geeky, they just sit there unused. Um, uh, and they probably did on your your PC for quite a while before did, you got back yeah. into it. So they I did. think that's, what, that's one of the real benefits of having these little modules where someone takes you through it you follow that, it's a bit laborious to start off with, and then suddenly, ah, you start to get the uh, The, the good thing is, it. It, this has actually been done with authors in mind, because I said that there's no point in a, in a, a, Q, a, a walkthrough that is selling, their, their thing is wizard hats and, and kind of magical gear, because yeah, it's hey, right. presto, as, as you say. So what they've done is they've actually done this with books in mind. So we'll be talking about books. Um, yep. So that that's good. I mean, we're going to have um, Dirk is going to be on the podcast in the next two or three weeks, I think. Um, James is going to be speaking to him. Um, so we'll we'll have a bit more on that. Um, but I think potentially this this is something that could be quite interesting. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. And they'll probably get a new long term customer from me as well. In the end. Okay. Right. Let's move on to our interview. We have Mark Recklow. Now I spoke to Mark a mm, over a year ago, maybe two years ago, actually. Um, down in Barcelona, sitting on his boat, which was a very enjoyable experience. And Mark is somebody who's uh, in the non-fiction space. He does these self-help books and um, sort of advice to changing your life a little bit. Uh, um, yeah, you have to look up Mark Recklow to describe his, uh, his array of non-fiction books. But he was somebody who was in quite a, not a dark place, I'm going to say, but he was struggling uh, financially, struggling with his life. Hence, he was living on a boat in Barcelona. Uh, he was in between jobs and he then started using Amazon ads in particular in anger and it's turned everything around from him. The books are the same as they were. He's obviously added to his collection, but he uh, will tell you in this interview that he has just had his first big well, $35,000 month, I think just under $35,000 last month he thinks he spends maybe 50 percent on ads which is higher than most people but 
as he makes the point in this interview, if you put in, you put in $15,000 and you get $30,000 back, you'll do that every month, won't you? Yeah, because that's 100% return on your investment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so this is Mark. Uh, good to talk to him and not just about nonfiction. I know a lot of you are out there doing nonfiction books and looking for hints and advice, but a lot of the stuff is a crossover as well with fiction. Uh, so here is Mark. This is the Self Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Mark Recklau, last time we were speaking was in London. The time before that was on a boat in Barcelona. Whenever I meet you, it's happy times and you are, you are, one of our students with the biggest smile on his face because, wow, you have... Well, for me, for me the same. Whenever I see you, it's happy time. Yeah. Or whenever I get my results from my ads, I think of you and Mark and John because it just has been un unbelievable, this journey since I bought the course two years ago and started out before the course. I was earning $800, $900 a month and you came by the boat. We had an interview here which is only one year ago, which in itself is only mind boggling because I was making 405, no, 4,000, 5,000. I said, I can, I know I can get to more. It's just a matter of work. And I worked more and I got to more and now it's just mind boggling. I've already passed a hundred K line this year. So this is something I couldn't even imagine and, some time ago. And, so and tell me what you told me off air, how much you did last month. Last month, 35 K. Oh, yeah, close to 34, 900 and something. So fantastic. Well, look, yes. Yeah. And and, we're, and you've done this all with nonfiction books. Yes. Uh, Self-help books. Self-help books, workbooks. That's the good thing for us nonfiction authors because we don't have to run at to book one of a series. So we, I just run it to all of my books. And I have noticed now with the years that really so, because I wrote a, write about different subjects, right? Habits, self-esteem, uh, gratitude. And I noticed that maybe a person who wouldn't have bought the habits book, bought the self-esteem book, and then they, they like what they read, and then they buy, buy all the other books. So for me, I think for, for us nonfiction writers, it, it multiplies even because we have different books that can bring, bring in readers. And have you been careful to uh, br brand the books? And a similar yeah. thing, so it's very easy for somebody to find the other one in the, in the series. If exactly, you... yeah. For me, it, it turned out everything is orange, so my, my covers are usually orange. And it's really funny because that's also what the ads do. So I had some covers that they didn't work so well, but I didn't want to admit it to myself because I thought they are great covers. But then the numbers don't lie, right? And then when you yeah. see that you get impressions, 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 but no click, then one of the things... Probably, it's probably an Amazon ads. It's probably the cover because that's the only yes. thing they see, right? Yeah. And then I changed the covers and then it got better. So, yeah. And also an idea for Mark, the series page. So I have a series page for my books. They were in the series first, but then I just made a series, the Good Habits series of a, you know, Change Your Habits, Change Your Life series. And now I have this wonderful series page with eight books on it. And that also helps, surely. And do you do um, box sets? Yes, I also have two box sets. Also, idea I didn't have before, but as you were repeating it so often, I said, okay, let's try it. And it was, I even got a book bub deal for one of my box sets. So, yeah, wow. So, yeah. I think you made a really good point uh, back then, which is uh, that you were in love with the cover and you were, you, you, had some resistance about admitting it, but the figures don't lie in terms of going out there. And the reason I repeat it is because conversations this week with, with somebody, it's not untypical, people who, who love the cover are convinced by it and they don't want to hear what people are telling them that that cover doesn't work in the genre it doesn't look like it's going to work and you don't really as ultimately mark you say you don't necessarily have to believe other people if you don't want to if you want to do it the hard way the expensive way yeah. you put it out then you run ads to it and then you learn the hard but you've got to pay attention to the data because that doesn't lie as you say exactly and then Honestly, I'm already saying it because, of course, many people ask me also, how, is it only the course, but how did you do it? And, uh, and I think, yes, it, is, it was the course, and, it was, and I think we mentioned it last year. It was also the fact that I was really, I was taking in everything. I was, every module, everything that you teach, I was doing it at least. And then I could see, does it work or does it not work? So I think it's very important. So it's not just now I learn Amazon ads, and now I'm going to become rich. It's like the whole system, I like to call it a system, because it's everything. So I adapted my newsletter 
my autoresponder, my email sequence, my my product page, my pricing, everything of it. And I think that's what makes it at the end work. Yeah. So, and that's sometimes even I think, oh, if if I change, if I would take one thing out of there, maybe the whole system wouldn't work anymore. So I got, imagine I got my agent got a a query from Penguin Random House USA for one of my books. But um, first of all, I said, I don't know what to ask for because this is a book that brings me $5,000 a month. So that's $60,000 a year. Let's say, well, calculated optimistically. So in five years, that's 300000 So my agent gets 20%. So if I would ask for 400000 I still don't earn anything. Yeah. yeah. So I, and they wanted a number and I said, don't even tell them a number. They will feel insulted because I know just let, let me go on with and what i want to say well, you should have said a million yeah that's probably something i will say but yeah. even there you know james the thing is if i take one book out of my system yeah. and even the best selling book will the whole still work yeah and uh, now is this comfortable situation where i'm making 20k 25k in average so i don't want to mess with it the only i, I suppose the um the only consideration there i mean you don't need Penguin Random House, and you say, as you say, it might upset the apple cart, as we say in the UK here. But could they get you to parts of the world that you couldn't get? Could they ha do they have a reach that goes beyond where you can get? I'm not sure if the answer is yes to that. It probably exactly. probably used to be, uh, but now that we have access to lots of different ways of promoting and, and different formats and so on, um, but yeah, I suppose that's the only consideration. And it, you know, maybe. Next time they come to you, if they're really desperate, you say, well, let's write a bespoke book for you that looks a little bit different from the rest of the series with your name on it very big. So it's not it's not going to impact on your series and ask them what they're going to do. What are they going to do for this contract? You know, where are the adverts going to go? They're going to put you into mainstream adverts. They're going to put adverts in Forbes magazine for you. I would say that's worth it because that raises yeah, it depends, you. But I really am also realistic enough. I say I'm too unknown. I don't have a huge following. I mean, I have an email list of 15,000. So it's like, you know, I'm a big fan of this old thing, never change a winning team. Yeah, Don't yeah. fix it if it ain't broken. And I had a experience with a publisher in Spain, which is, and I know of a, many horror stories of self-published authors that were selling a lot. Then they sold their rights and then they stopped selling. And I would be a failed author. And the fun thing is, I told you before, so I have now four books in the, in the top five, top six of self-help in, in the US, in the Spanish part. I have a couple in the top 10 in Spain and those are failed, failed books. They are re rejected books from these publishers because they didn't sell a lot of my first book I had with them, but then I managed to sell a lot. So it's like, don't fix it if it ain't broken. Yeah. I'm just having a look at your books. I do like the covers. Who does the covers? Oh, on Fiverr. I do them on Fiverr. Wow. I have some, a couple of people on Fiverr. So what I usually do is, I get like four of them to design covers and usually there's always one good cover there. And of course, now with the series, I can send them to the series and say, look, it should f fit in, in this series. Yeah. And then they get it fixed. I mean, that's the main thing about any cover is, is it's genre, isn't it? And your covers are all very much in genre for that type of uh, type of book. Well, that's fantastic, uh, Mark. I mean, so, so happy for you. And we should say you're a truly international guy. You're German by birth and citizenship, I guess, still. Yes. Uh, living in Spain at the moment, although there's a move, I think, on the horizon for you. Uh, there's and, a move on the horizon. And in terms of markets that you found success in, uh, a coincidence, I suppose, that you happen to be in Spain when you started all this, and Spain has been a really good market for you. Spain has been amazing and has really carried me through for the longest time because when I look at my my ads in the US and now with the new module, which I'm already 75% through, I will, have, I will go back to the drawing board and really look at my US ads again because they are not as great as 25 or 35K would let you imagine because for a long time, let's say the whole last year, this, my ads in Spain were going very well, but this also stopped in December. And what now is happening and is incredible and is carrying me through is Spanish books in the US. That's just incredible. And it, exactly of my best-selling book, Love Yourself First, it's called in Spanish, Quierete. 
this is something amazing because I have only nine ads for that book in the US. And then one automatic ad just started going crazy, but crazy in a good way. It already sold, it sold like $9,000. And then I, when I look now at the success of the book, everything points back to that ad. So that wow. happens also something that happened to me now with two books already. So that's also something nice because you, when it happens once or twice, I mean, you don't, you don't depend on it. You can't, you don't search for it, but you know, it can happen yeah. anytime again. And it's a, it's a good feeling because you can actually really see how this ad I do wonder if nonfiction lends itself better to the automatic ads than fiction. I've had no no joy with automatic ads, although I know some people have. And Mark always says should you should start with them and get some data. But um, nonfiction, because Amazon basically is a massive nonfiction business. We sell fiction books on it, but it, it, as a, a percentage of overall Amazon, it's small. And the algorithms work across everything, which is something I've learned through Janet's course, yeah. where she says that the auto-targeting, for instance, if you, if you write a book, that's like um, you know the, uh, the the sports the sports car billionaire romance series. When it does its suggested bid, the algorithm's looking at sports car uh, and that sort of wording, and looking at parts for sports cars. So it's not it's not a, a, a an algorithm geared around books, but nonfiction. I think maybe you fit into that ecosystem a little bit better, and that's why that automatic targeting was able to find your customers. I have no idea because I really, but the thing is, the fun thing is sometimes because that I harvest my keywords, right? And look, and then really there's sometimes, sometimes it's book, 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 right. want, want. Wow. I'm like who is, who is putting want, want into, yeah. the, <laughs> into the search bar, but um, it's okay. And that's one thing about it. And the other thing is like, yeah, but when do you know if a keyword is good, right? For me, a keyword is good when somebody clicks 10 times and buys my book, then yes. it's a good keyword, no yeah, matter exactly. what the keyword is. And sometimes it's like, Books about sex. My books are not about sex, but well, if ten people click on it and one buys it, then it's a good keyword. Although my head would say that's not a good keyword. Yeah, but the data says otherwise. The data. It, it's really at the end you get back to the data, and I think that was also one of the the key changes in my mindset when I really check data. And even now, when I see where my weaknesses are, it's because I didn't check my data in the U.S. for a long time because I was blinded just by the by the, the huge numbers, you know, and they really, I mean, I'm gonna get a little bit lazy when success comes, you know, and when <laughs> my workload goes down, when you make, when you make a thousand or eight hundred dollars a day, I'm more the guy who's less like, ah, ah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I had to, to, yeah, re-mentalize again to, to well, go we, back to the drawing board. Well, we are doing this so that we can enjoy our lives, right? So that has yeah. to be a balance there. You, you can take some time off, Mark. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and enjoy yourself yeah. in the sun down there. Um, yeah, so Spanish language in the US. Let's just talk about that for a second. Obviously, you're nonfiction, but this does apply equally to fiction writers. And there are people out there doing similar figures to you. They're doing, you know, a good 10-figure, um, sorry, five-figure months. And probably only publishing in English across all genres. But it's easy to forget, particularly when you don't live in the States, it's easy to forget how widely spoken Spanish is. Incredible, yeah. I mean, you have more than 300 million people, I think, in the US and Latin America, because a lot of Latin America also buys on the dot-com, so. Right. Mexico, we're not even talking about Mexico yet, because we can't, I can't advertise in Mexico yet. When I can start ad advertising in Mex Mexico, it's even more happy times. And it's another thing I forgot to say. before. Advertising my Spanish books in the U.S., I made zero dollars with Spanish books, zero organic sales, and now, thanks that uh, since I think since mid October or so, we can advertise Spanish books on the dot com. That's when now it's more than fifty percent of my my income nearly. Wow! So that's mind boggling. And then we don't even talk about the U.K., Germany, and all this. So I noticed for me, France and and Italy don't work very right. well, but I, there's some good uh, info in the course from Mark, from Ch Ch Janet, right? Yeah, Ch I think so, who Janet. says, yeah, what sells well in France. So I'm going to try okay. that maybe. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So right now with Canada, UK, US and Spain. And what, okay. what, what about Germany? You mentioned Germany. Obviously, you're German and it's your first language. No? For well, me, it's horrible. I think because I was motivated because I saw Mark's success and I said, okay, I'm going to translate my books into German because I stopped 
translating my books in, in German before because I felt the German people, they don't like my books. Uh, what? And then I said, yeah. What's wrong with them? Uh, I, too happy, too happy. And then the thing is, <laughs> and then I, but I got motivated and I translated my books to German. And it's going on like this. So I'm making money in Germany, but I'm making more money with my English books. And the really thing that really, mm, yeah. I don't know how well, it's, it's weird. It disappoints me. It's a prosperous country, Germany, and it does well in almost every league table. In fact, funny enough, we've, we're going through the coronavirus thing at the, at the moment, and it doesn't surprise me at all that Germany's figures are like a billion times better than everybody. It's always the case, and they beat us in every football match. Thank goodness the Euros aren't happening o now. Because, only in penalties. Only, only in penalties. On penalties. <laughs> but I do wonder if there's something in the psychology of living in a country where there's very good employment, uh, things work well against living maybe if you're Spanish speaking in the southern parts of the US where life's a bit more of a struggle or in Latin America where life is a struggle where you want to improve that that hunger to improve yourself maybe that's why your books are going I mean I'm being philosophical I don't know I can really tell you the most funny thing and also bothering thing is that they buy a lot of my English books and my English books get great ratings right and then they buy my German books they buy a lot less of them and then they even give me bad ratings and I'm like what is happening here? But I will, this is a challenge. Sooner or later, I will get them. Maybe it's just, you know, as because the Germans are a little bit strange and they may be one of the few people that, you know, when Spanish meets Spanish in the US, they're like, ah, Spanish, Spanish. The Germans are the only ones who say, oh, those are Germans. Let's go. Let's go to the <laughs> other side. And maybe it's just, you know, from, and they think I'm English. They say, oh, what a great writer in English. But when they, when I'm German, suddenly they say, oh, what a, what a simple book. It's not, not good enough for us. So, yeah. How funny. Oh, there. Well, there you yeah. go. You don't need Germany, do you? Nah, I know it's a challenge. Sooner yeah. or later, I'll get yeah. them. Crack that market. Uh, in terms of the Spanish translation, Mark, I know you speak fluent Spanish. Do you do the translation yourself? I do the translation myself and then give it to a native speaker to do the correction most of the time. Because the thing is, I get the book in English. I write it in English. I get it corrected and edited in English. So that... But it's had, had already one editing process. So then I translated it practically literally, and then I get another proofreader on it just to get all the mistakes out. But the editing, copy editing and stuff is usually done. And is the Spanish spoken commonly in Latin America and, and the United States the same as the Spanish spoken in Spain? No, it's not. <clears throat> Actually, it's not. But the fun thing is I write it in Spanish because first I wrote only for Spain. And now the books have success also in Latin America because it's a slightly different Spanish, but I, it seems to work. Okay, it so you haven't, had it, you haven't had them translated into that slightly different Spanish? It, yeah, and exactly. And act, actually, because the, uh, they also sp and, um, in Latin America, they speak a formal, um, formal, formal, more formal Spanish. They don't, because I'm going like very directly and I try to talk to the person directly and in Latin America, it's a little bit different. So if I would translate my books in that kind of Spanish, maybe they would lose a little bit of this because I really want to talk to you, not to to Mr. So-and-so, right? So Yeah. Well, let's talk about the books a little bit. So do you think that's one of the secrets of the success, the sort of direct conversational relationship you have with the reader? Absolutely. I think uh, one of the success, uh, secrets to success is I write simple. I write like I talk, conversational. I um, I try, you know, I wrote my first book. It's like I wrote it to myself. I wrote because I read self-help for many years and never applied it. And so as yes, I never applied it, no, nothing changed in my life, right? I mean, it always goes like this, but I had bad relationships, bad jobs. And, and then when I wrote 30 Days, which was my first book, I wanted to, I always started doing exercises I am already because I noticed that in personal development there are a couple of exercises that if you really do them they work and all the people who do them become successful strange that but, if, you, yeah. if you if you actually employ if you actually implement it if you don't implement it strange how it doesn't work yeah exactly yeah and then and so but only and only three or four percent of our people implemented so I started implementing it because I was troubleless when I wrote it. I was like, oh, wow, this works. You know, it's getting better. It's going going up uphill. And then that's why, why I, my writing style is also like this. I only want them to get to do the exercises. I also don't. So it's very, not a lot of mm, talk and information. So it's like, no, look, this and this and this and this. And now here you have to exercise and now do it. And it's going to be 
and tell me how it's going to be probably well. And so that's how all my books are written in a way to get people to take action because that is the difference. And I know it because for 20 or 30 years, I didn't take action. And since I've been taking action in the last six, seven years, I've, I've gone from jobless to making 25, 30 K a month. I mean, it seems like I invented it, but <laughs> but it's really true. Yeah. So you I, you've always been quite modest about your books, and I think that's that comes through in in terms of you don't you don't claim that what you're writing is groundbreakingly original. What you're what you're doing is giving people a method of implementing really good advice and changing their lives as a result of it. Exactly. I don't. There's, you will nothing find nothing new in my in my books, and it's also not. A, I think everything has been said. I think they're they are not many new great things in the personal development to discover the great thing to discover is do it yeah. those people who do it they and that's yeah how i i approach it and people tell me they are oh, i didn't find anything new i said yeah yeah but did you do the exercise then i'm then i'm happy then i have reached my goal my goal is for you to do the exercise and not only for 30 days or for 60 days but until the for the rest of your life. And do you do how much do you do with your audience, with your readers? Uh, you've got 15,000 odd on your mailing list, but this feels like, because the relationship you build through your writing with somebody reading your books, feels like you're probably going to have quite a lot of contact with your readers. I have, yeah. I, it's like maybe, it's also not as much, you know, like maybe 20 or 30 mails a day. And I, I am, no. every comment on Facebook, every email, I answer it. That was something I have done all the time because I, I think I owe it to them. I mean, sometimes when they ask too much, I say, now I can't answer you anymore. <laughs> you have to work. I can do your push-ups, but, you know, yeah. still at least. Or if they get, I'm not like John Dyer. If they get rude, I don't answer them anymore. <laughs> I'm not like John who is always nice. He's always polite. But, um, yeah, but for me, it's like, yeah. And it's really nice also because it people write awesome stuff, you know. Uh, like, and sometimes even they say, my, your book saved my my life and then you say wow you know it's like just an, yeah, say wow i mean then that then everything was worthwhile and that's how I, how i deal with them and are you going to branch out from book writing i mean in your space people give conferences and host events where people pay big money to be in a room with you for the day that sort of thing yeah no right now not not about they had i had a conference coming on in costa rica which due to COVID was unfortunately postponed, not canceled. But the funny thing is, it's even the other way around. For me, it was always, you know, I like the coaching, I like the conferences, but I mean, the best thing is sitting on my boat and making ads and earning yeah. five figures. Mm, and you you get also, I, I also get a little bit self-complacent. So with the Costa Rica gig, it was really good money and everything. And then after a while, you say, oh, well, but it's 10 hours on the plane and 10 hours back or now. It would be, oh, I have to put on a, a mask on my blend. Oh, so the best thing is like doing ads and selling books. That's, I was always obsessed with that. That's why I searched and uh, thank God found Mark because all the other stuff didn't work for me so well. The online courses didn't work. The conferences was very difficult to get them because you have to go out and look for them. They are not coming yeah. just like this. Well, there is a simplicity to what Mark teaches, which is to s sit in a room. <laughs> on your bum and go through the data and set some things. So let's talk about that a little bit uh, in terms of what you've done. So it is, is primarily or is it exclusively Amazon ads that you run? Yes. You Only don't Amazon run any ads. Facebook ads? No, because Amazon ads worked from the beginning. From Facebook ads, I always had a kind of fear because I all, always only lost money on Facebook. So I said, okay, while it, it's working. So I, and then I just build it up on, on, on Amazon. And it's also, we always shouldn't forget it has been two years. So in the first year, maybe I came from eight, nine hundred dollars to four, five thousand. And then I said, well, let's do some more ads. Let's do instead of 10 ads a month, do 20 or 30 months. Oh, suddenly I was at eight thousand. And then I, I tried to do more and more ads all the time. And I even know, noticed now with the new uh, ads course, I'm still doing a lot of stuff wrong. And so that makes me happy because I know there's a lot of improvement a lot of room for improvement but i because before i thought more ads more money more ads more money when i looked at my numbers I said oh well that's not entirely true anymore because my most ads i have like 80 or 90 ads for 30 days in the us 
and I'm just making two or three K with that. On the other hand, what I mentioned, I had nine ads for the Spanish book and I'm, I'm making 5K a month with it. So I will go back to the drawing board and check it out, maybe optimize a little bit, but I will also still go on just with this old blatant method, just, okay, yes. more ads, more ads. I got a little bit scared when she talked about ad fatigue mm -hmm. because that's what could be happening in the US with my ads. But well, it's just, you know, for me, I said, I said to Natalia, my girlfriend, I said, look, it's like starting from scratch again, but it's a lot, a lot easier to start from scratch with 20 or 25K coming in than with, yes. with nothing. Yeah, so, exactly. And at some point you can refresh the covers and, and have a whole new look and so on. There's always ways of reinventing. And your exactly. message, I imagine, is timeless. I, there's probably not much in your books that dates. No, that's, that's also the good thing. Yeah, it's timeless. So now I'm going to write a book about minimalism because, my, because minimalism, so I'm now preparing a move and I throw again. I, I already threw half of my stuff out when I moved to the boat. Overboard. No, no, in the no, containers okay. here. But and now I have to throw again half of the stuff out. Mostly, it's stuff you haven't used for five years anyway. So that's the fun thing. But the thing is, I feel better and better. You know, less stuff. So I came to Barcelona seventeen years ago with one bag. It was great, and I'm probably leaving with. Then I accumulated a lot of stuff. Then I threw it out again, and now I will probably leave with two bad bags. And for me, it feels good. It is it's a lightness you know it feels lighter it seems like when you go when you get a little bit metaphysical the energy flows better things fall into places so very interesting yeah stuff. that is i mean that's a big movement isn't it? minimalism um uh, decluttering and and all, all that stuff so i mean I, my problem is i like stuff so i like to order stuff i like it arriving i like unboxing it and getting it out but i do know what you mean and it feels every now and again there is something incredibly cathartic about clearing the space around you about having a nice yeah. clean office which i i'm a bit messy mark is fastidiously clean but during covid one of the things i've done is i've chucked a load of stuff out of my office reorganized it and honestly the feeling it's it's a very real thing it's incredible isn't it? yeah. it's, a, it's a very and real i mean thing. you don't have to st throw the stuff you like uh, for me it's like most of the stuff i wrote i, I threw away are really like typically you have 40 t-shirts but you always wear the same 10 yes so okay you could get rid of 20 that you never wear yeah and you still have 20 10 you know 10 you will never wear and 10 you will wear always don't throw away your mark dawson self-publishing formula <laughs> t-shirt have you got one of course. Yes, good. I hope I have to get a new one soon because now I'm a short pants and I want to become a talentless hack. Yes, there you go. That's a great phrase. Huh? I want to become a talentless hack. Yeah, you should call one of your books that. Um, so so you're running. I mean, I'm a little bit surprised that Facebook ads, I, I think at some point that you need to visit Facebook ads. That's a new audience, a different audience there. And I yeah. think your messaging and books would, I mean, it's just a hunch, but you never really know. And as you say, as, we, as you've been saying, you're surprised by the data sometimes. But my hunch is that these books could do well on Facebook. I am, I'm, I have, it comes to mind every now and then, sooner or later, because when I did the course the first time, I also already get everything set up for Facebook. You know, I looked at the best ads, best copy, but then I just, stopped it but it can be uh it can be become a new thing soon because the, the best thing is really i mean when it gets more and more all the time so a friend of mine another author a spanish author he said the beatles always said when they needed to buy something they wanted a new house and you kind said we have to write a song and i and he and i we say when we want something we're like, okay we have to make a couple of ads yeah and maybe <laughs> now we will say okay we need to get into facebook ads Need to write another book. Yeah. Write another song. Well, the Beatles famously were ripped off. Yeah. And they never saw, they saw very little of the money that uh, lots of people around them made with inept management. And you know Incredible. what? This, this whole movement that you and I are a part of is the antidote to what they went yes. through. The antidote to all those artists, authors, musicians who just get fleeced by corporate uh, entities that take all the money. So, yeah. I'm no, no, it's incredible. Yeah. We, we are lucky people. Yeah. So for, uh, Amazon ads are working well. You still run some automated campaigns, I guess. But but what is, what is there any sort of key tidbits you can you can hand out to us? Uh, so for me, it was really, and I, that's I didn't know it's wrong, but the thing for me it was because it was something Mark I think said in the first edition uh, to scale up. It was more ads, more keywords, more books. Yeah. And I stuck to this, and now I have to rethink. 
if it's really but it worked so so long so it's another thing you know i never it's for me very difficult to change things that work it's only i only change things when they stop working and thank god i saw now my numbers in the us and saw that i was blinded by all the other great thing going on so now i can go back there and and think and so my system is very easy i think i said it also in, in the show in the live spf sps live in london I have one golden rule that I have followed all the time. Because one thing is I, I check my ad every, ads every day. For the first year, year and a half, I check them every day, every day. So I got a feel for it, right? I got a feel for it. I know now exactly if I make a new ad after one or two days, I have to go into it so that I don't get 100 clicks for a book book that don't sell. And so what I found out is that for me, from the beginning, it was like, I want to make a sale with 15 clicks. So I go in in my keywords. They are all like ordered by click. And when I see 16 clicks, no sale, I turn it off. Wow. And maybe this is not logical at all. And it's something just that came out of my mind. And when you ask me, how did you get, why 15? I have no idea. I think because one guy said 10 and the other said 20. So I said, well, for me, it will be 15. I expect to sell at 15. Clicks. And that's something I did all the time. And it worked. And my, I mean, my conversions are not awesome. So I guess I'm spending a little bit too much money for my earnings. But it's like if you spend 15K and you get a 30, I mean, try it with your bank. Yeah. Go to your bank today, yeah, yeah, yeah. give them 15K and say, give me 20 at the end of the month. And they probably call the police. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that you're you're absolutely right. And I do remember a um in the early days when Mark talked about this, somebody emailed us and said he'd been working in corporate industry his whole life and he can tell you that that's a terrible return that you need a thousand percent, not hundred and fifty. Mark's saying, I put a pound I put a pound in and I get a pound fifty out. What and and also I work from home. You know, so I suppose this guy was thinking of the days when you had this huge building in London filled with people who weren't making money for you, they were doing administration and uh, running the cafeteria or, or whatever very valuable jobs but every dollar that comes in has got to pay for all of that before it even makes so in those days exactly that's a massively inefficient way of running a business and you have to make huge amounts of money just to stand still whereas we work in our underpants on a boat or in a bedroom and you know yeah. you get a dollar fifty in for a dollar spend happy days you're, exactly you're eating that and night i think one of the things is also that i never got lost in two you know in detail it's the same approach like in my books. It's, I'm very simplistic. I'm not, um, I'm doing something and then if, if it works, it's good. And if it doesn't work, well, I try something else, but I'm not, sometimes people, they, they write to me and say, oh, how do I optimize it? Shall I up my bid or shall I do it? I said, I don't know. I never did it. I go in with 30 cents or 35 cents or whatever. I put a daily budget, which I always thought helps, but maybe won't. Maybe it does. I put it on a thousand bucks, although I don't have them. If I, So I give Amazon like, right to they could take 200,000 bucks from you of course they don't do it they take it 300 or 200 a day and that's that was my thing so i never went back to an ad and tried the only thing i went back to an ad was to turn off clicks uh, to turn off keywords that have more than 15 clicks i, I am amazed at that just because it seems like a very low sample size <laughs> yeah i know and statistically <laughs> I mean, the statistical guys, they probably they sh shake their heads now or something, but it's... It's worked. It could be better, maybe, but I don't know, but it's worked. So... Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so do you have an idea? Well, I'm sure you do have an idea overall. I think Mark says he spends roughly a third of his income. If he looks at his overall revenue, about a third of that is spent on ads. Are you closer to half, do you think? You were saying... Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I would say half. Yeah. And that, you know, that's a different, and it, again, like you say, it doesn't matter if you can scale up. And you're talking to a guy who seven years ago was jobless, was getting yeah. 800 euros of jobless money. When I worked in the company, I was working my ass off for 160 hours or more for 2000, getting harassed, getting pressure, a lot of pressure. I worked in the book business. I worked in a book printer, so wow. there were loads of pressure. So, and now I'm sitting on my boat and it's like, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And uh, a couple more questions about the books. The uh, uh, Are most of your sales in ebook format? Because I imagine this is a book that lends itself to physical format as well. Oh, it's great that you ask it. I have forgotten it. I hardly sell any ebooks anymore. Oh. But last, last month I made 25K in paperback books. Wow. That's 
that's also one of the reasons why I say I'm for, for a traditional publisher. It's not interesting for me if yeah. I'm my, by myself. Can, so, but last last month was an incredible month. That was also I have to say that was the best month ever. I think for many of us. But so the usual would be 15k in paperback. So I sent. Uh, I get afraid. So I notice now when when the Amazon warehouse closed, or when there's a holiday in the US, or when, when because then my sales go down maybe from 700, 800 a month uh, a day to two or 300 because they're selling more eBooks because of course the paperbacks have an enormous, uh, how you said mar margin. Yes, uh, yeah. yes, margin, so, yeah, markup. So I would say right now more than half of my sales come by, of the money come from paperbacks. Wow, and this is print on demand through KDP. Yes. Yeah. Gosh, that's amazing. I mean, it looks, it just at a glance, it looks to me like your books are, would be a nice thing to have and to sit and read rather than read on a Kindle. So I can see why they sell. Uh, and you've had to price them. I'm mean, looking at the Kindle prices here, but presumably you've had to price these um, fairly heftily. At print. Yeah, my Kindle ebooks are at four ninety nine because it it works with ads. You know, the great thing about ads is also, so, I mean, reviews are super important. But I noticed uh, because the, the review team didn't work for me, the asking for review rebooks, uh, reviews in my books didn't work for me. But when everybody, when anybody writes to me and I answer, then I tell them, oh, well, if it's possible to leave a review, that would be great. Fi helps other readers find the book, and that that's how I get most of my reviews. And the thing is, really, then Amazon Ads is the solution for me for everything because the more books I sell the more organic reviews come because they come, the organic reviews. And then the price is $4.99 and even the bad reviews. I started off many books with one with one, one star review, which is like the nightmare. And you before a book like this was dead. And then, of course, you, you probably have to invest more money so that people click on a book that has one star. Yeah. But it's, it's, we have all the time, we always say this is, it's not a year. It's when you think of 10 years of it. Yeah. And then you get your book out of the one star and get more and more five star reviews. It works. So the, for me, the Amazon ads solve this problem. They're also launching uh, very seldomly. I can do launches now without my email list because I just put it on pre-sale, run some ads to it, and then it, it sells three, four, five copies a day for a month, six weeks, and then Amazon already notices it, For in my opinion, because I think if they see six, seven books already, it's... It's not bad. It's not fifty or sixty, but they see uh, this book. Yeah. And then maybe I sell, send a couple of mails to my list, and then the book goes out, and the rankings are maybe also not awesome. But it's not. So that was also something that I changed. I'm not looking at the rankings anymore. I'm really only looking at the numbers anymore. Yeah. And if my book, if I have a book that brings me fifty bucks a day, I don't care if it's number three hundred, number five hundred, or whatever, because. I'm looking, I want the 50 bucks every day. Yeah. And that also helped, yeah. Yeah, do you know, I completely agree. And since I've been marketing Robert Story's books through our little company, Fuse, I have, I, I, I always forget to look at the rankings. They're kind of irrelevant. Uh, we had a BookBub deal and I was doing the after BookBub deal survey and I said, did you notice an improvement in your rankings on the day? And I thought, I don't know, I didn't look. So, I, <laughs> yeah, But exactly. I did look at how many clicks we got in the adverts. I'd looked at how many sales we got, how many page trees exactly. we got. These are the things that matter um, exactly. to us. Yeah. And then for me, the, the most important number every day is like when I look at my sales from the KDP dashboard and my spendings from the AMS dashboard. And as, as long as that number is north of 400, 500, yeah. I'm happy because that's net net income then already. And I mean, come on, we are really privileged people. So I, when I'm talking with my author friends, we, really, we, say, we can't even believe it sometimes. Uh, look at us. Yeah. As, as you said, we work on an underwear on our boat, on our living room or whatever, and we are making a CEO salary yes yes and we don't have a and i personally don't have a lot of stress i only get afraid as you noticed when i get a mean mail from amazon yes which tells me you did something wrong and then i go, oh no and then no. I, that happened last month i reached out to everybody and said oh my god but it's all it's, it's all sorted. sorted now yeah i but mean it's I, like, everyone yeah. gets those from time to time even mark gets one i mean we had an ad taken down in fact, i think it was facebook actually last month we had an ad taken down by facebook and you know, it's, it's, it is scary for that moment when your, your living depends on it, but you do need to have a few deep breaths and yeah. Uh, yeah. work it through. But you got it resolved. And you're a big guy, you know, for Amazon in Spain in particular, you are someone whose name they know. 
I don't know, not anymore, because the, I knew the boss of KDP Spanish Worldwide, which was a great guy, but he went back to the States. So now I also don't, I don't know so many people. I know people who know people, which, which is always good. But the fun thing about me is also I'm not standing out in any country. So there in Spain, there are people that sell more than me. I'm like flying under the radar. In, in the U.S., there are surely people that sell more than me. But when you take it all together, then I'm like, okay, it's okay. But I'm, I'm not on their radar. I have to get on their radar again. Get on their radar. <laughs> Mark, it's such a fun experience talking to you. It's such a great success story. And I think your books are going to be selling. They're going to be keeping you in your retirement, you know, in years to come because they're, they're ever, evergreen books. They're books that are always going to be selling and always going to work. If you um, work for you, if you put. I some... hope so. I hope so. Yeah, I hope uh, really because the thing is, I think we are only at the beginning. You said that also often. You know, of this Amazon because people said already two years ago, oh, Amazon ads don't work and stuff. And I think we are still at the beginning. Yeah. Because they're so, and then you say like, wow, you know, what else is there to come? Yeah. There, there is stuff coming down the line this year. We know on Amazon ads in the background, oh, so yeah. it should be a uh, will be exciting. Mark, thank you so much indeed for joining us. The happy, smiling, Germo, G Germanic, Spanish, I, I can't, what were correct words? Germanic, Spanish, um, international man of mystery. International. Maltese. To Maltese. Maltese. So yeah, that's the cat out the bag. Malta is the next destination. So um, we're going to have to find an excuse to come down to Valletta, which is yeah, a I beautiful think so too, eh? medieval harbour uh, and a lovely uh, Mediterranean oh. island. So yeah. Yeah, we fell, fell in love with the island and then... Uh, things in Spain don't look so great right now. I said, let's try it. Let's go. Let's go. And of course, it's an old English colony, uh, Malta. So yes. you'll see you'll see some amazing old English cars driving around in that place. No, I also I like the mix of Malta because it's between modern and medieval. Yes. Uh, Oriental and English, so it's really. And very the people are lovely. Very important trading post for thousands of years, and you're going to be sat yes. there at the front line of modern trading, which is uh, exciting. Yes. Good. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. What a pleasure. Thanks, James. This is the Self Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. There you go. Mark Recklow is going to move to Malta. Uh, he's a bit unhappy with Spain. He said their lockdown was brutal you know, during COVID. He says they've got tax laws coming in, which aren't going to be very helpful for people running small businesses. And he's looking at Malta as being a, a friendlier place to be. And what a lovely position he is in now with that money enabling these lifestyle choices. Yeah, you can just um, unmoor the boat and um, point it in the right <laughs> direction and see where he ends up. I'd, I'd probably don't... end up towards the Maldives or something like that, but you know, whatever. Yeah, I don't think he's ever sailed that boat. And he spoke on a panel in uh, our conference last year. We'll have news on 2021 conference soon, I think. But um, he spoke on a panel last year and I have spoken to him this year to think about, well, potentially a panel again. But there's probably a small session I think he could do um, moving into new markets, moving into different languages, nonfiction, Amazon ads driving. So if we yeah, get, to more, yeah, yeah, we get to more granular details, uh, uh, in the next conference, I think he'd be a great guy. And he's a very, very approachable, nice guy to speak to. And of course, he thanks you. He wants to put a statue up to you. Well, I've been waiting for ages. So uh, yeah. although no, to say that, he's actually very generously con contributing to the foundation this year. So that we, we'll take that in yes. view of a statue. Yeah, we didn't mention that in the interview. Mark has donated to create another foundation place for uh, an author who can't afford to get going uh, to give them the money to do so. And you can find out uh, all about that on our website. Right, we're running out of time on our little um, recording period we get on our cameras, Mark. So um, that's it. We're wrapping up today. Don't forget you can go to selfpublishingformula.com forward slash six secrets uh, to get the replay from Janet Margot's webinar on Amazon ads. All that remains for me to say is that it's a goodbye from him and a goodbye from me goodbye goodbye get show notes the podcast archive and free resources to boost your writing career at selfpublishingshow.com join our thriving facebook group at selfpublishingshow.com forward slash facebook support the show at patreon.com forward slash self-publishing show and join us next week for more help and inspiration so that you can make your mark as a successful indie author. Publishing is changing, so get your words into the world and join the revolution with The Self-Publishing Show.